In the years since Huxley, science has learned a lot about brain activity, but the relationship between brain activity and conscious experiences is still a mystery. Let's begin with a question. Do we see reality as it is? I think so. But could I be wrong? Could I be misinterpreting the nature of my perceptions? We've misinterpreted our perceptions before. We used to think the Earth is flat. Then we thought that the Earth is the unmoving center of the universe. Once we let go of our massively intuitive but massively false assumption about the nature of reality, it opens up new ways to think about life's greatest mystery. If you're like most people, then you have a house, a family, and possibly a job. All of your days are filled with work and chores, and once you're finally ready to relax, it's time for bed. As time goes on, the repetition and monotony of daily life often leaves you wondering, what the hell am I even doing here? From the sunniest summer days to the coldest, driest days of the winter, and from the happiest moments to the saddest experiences, these are the kinds of things that all of us humans can relate to. Even though our lives are filled with hardships, we look on the bright side and focus on our values and growth. While your answer to this question is likely different to others, it is likely that at some point you have come to your own conclusion. And although we all have our own beliefs about existence, one thing we can all agree on is that nothing can be absolutely certain. In 17th century France, a young philosopher named René Descartes asked himself this exact question. However, to him, it was much more than just an afterthought of a long and stressful day. He spent years trying to come up with his best possible answer. While some of his thought experiments seem rather far-fetched, after watching this video, you will find yourself questioning reality itself. Although he was a very religious man, Descartes questioned the existence of a benevolent and all-good God. He believed that such a God would not deceive him under any circumstances. However, he knows from his own experiences that he has been deceived before, both by the world and by others. Because of this, there appears to be the possibility that a malevolent demon is instead in charge. A demon with the goal of deceiving us in every possible way, rendering everything we know completely uncertain. The evil demon thought experiment led Descartes to believe that nothing can be unconditionally trusted, and that everything he experiences ought to be questioned. A more modern and perhaps even more vexing thought experiment is the brain in the fat thought experiment. Reimagining Descartes' evil demon, Gilbert Harmon introduced his brain in a vat thought experiment in the 1980s. Here we imagine an isolated brain that is placed in a tank of life-sustaining liquid like that found in the skull. The neurons of this brain are connected to a computer via electrical wires, and the computer sends electrical signals to the neurons identical to those found in an embodied brain. This would cause the brain to have a regular conscious experience, even though everything it knows is completely artificial and predetermined. Imagine you are a brain in a vat. Instead of being a true sentient being, you are just a spectator experiencing a universe that is completely designed and controlled by some external entity. At any point, they could alter your reality to their liking, or even unplug you from the computer all while you wouldn't know any different. The overall consensus of this eerie thought experiment? The same as Descartes from nearly 400 years ago. The argument goes as following. If you are not a brain in a vat, then everything you know is real. However, if you are a brain in a vat, then you cannot believe anything is real. Since both of these statements are true, and there is no way to prove you are not a brain in a vat, it seems like again we find a reason to question everything we believe. One of the main uses of this thought experiment is an argument for solipsism, or the idea that only your own mind exists for sure. While there are many different degrees of solipsism, the main interest for this video is the idea that there is no way of knowing for certain that anything outside of your direct experience is true. Other people could be NPCs tailored to fit perfectly in your uninteresting universe. All these stars in the sky placed deliberately to trick you into believing you are a small piece to a nearly infinite cosmic narrative. This seems both highly unlikely and even egotistical to believe. In the 1970s, Hilary Putnam sought out to this exact thought experiment to see what conclusions he could reach, and all of his findings led to the emergence of his own new, albeit compelling, thought experiment. It's called the Twin Earth Thought Experiment, and it was this. Imagine there is another planet on the other side of the universe that is identical to Earth. We have Bob living on Earth, 
and Twin Bob living on Twin Earth. Both Bobs have the same job, live in the same house, and have the same families. However, instead of H2O on Twin Earth, the oceans are full of what we know as soda. Although on Earth this liquid is known as soda, everyone on Twin Earth still refers to it as water. When you ask the two Bobs the question, what are the oceans full of, they will both answer water. And even though they are speaking about different liquids, the neurological signals across the two Bobs' minds would be indistinguishable. This led Putnam to believe that one's frame of reference cannot be determined by the contents of their brain alone. Instead, we must explore the causal action that led to someone learning this term in the first place. When both Bobs were four years old, they went on a family vacation to the beach. It was here they asked their mothers the question, what are the oceans full of? And here, we would find a difference in the answer they received. This difference is enough to cause the frame of reference of Bob to develop separately from the frame of reference of Twin Bob. This first causal action is the first of many that lead these two physically identical beings to have completely different conscious experiences. However, the point of these thought experiments are not to find some crazy theory to believe in or to explain the universe. Instead, to experience, even if just for a moment, the lack of any limiting beliefs or dogma. The school of epistemology that indoctrinates this theme is skepticism. In modern day, when you hear that someone is a skeptic, they often have a bad reputation of being wrongly opinionated or even just a conspiracy theorist. However, it has not always been this way. Since the teachings of Aristotle and Plato thousands of years ago, scholars have been questioning the perceived truths of the masses. Instead of arguing over an objective truth, the ancient skeptics highlighted the subjectivity in everything and chose to embrace the unknown as a goldmine for critical thinking. While being a skeptic in the ancient times was probably much different than today, we believe that now is the most important time for us to learn to question our reality. With the explosion of the internet in the digital world, every day we are bombarded with false information. From flat out propaganda on the news to delusional perceptions portrayed on social media, it's impossible to escape these false realities. While there is nothing wrong with uncertainty, having too much that you cannot manage will lead you to developing many limiting beliefs and views of the world that almost definitely worsen your own conscious experience. By accepting that uncertainty is a major part of life and that just because something is unexpected doesn't make it any worse than something you already anticipated, you are able to open up new opportunities to experience reality in a more curious and secure manner. So don't lock yourself in your room and ponder the meaning of your existence. But it is important that with every decision you make, you take a second to evaluate who gets the final say. Is it the real you, or just your perception of yourself?